but I kept, you know, following the progression of new media, always looking for the ones that offered the greatest multimodal affordances. And so computer games uh, appealed to me greatly uh, around the year 2000, uh, as they did also to Jim G, who was, was studying similar things about the same time, uh, in terms of the very rich multimodal affordances. And because computer games are a more dynamic medium, a medium in which events unfold in time in a way that is not as completely under the control of the user as, let's say, in a website. And a website, if I follow a trajectory across links from here to there, I control the timing and the pacing of those shifts. But if I'm in a computer game, the program controls as much as I do. Sometimes it's even a fight between me trying to slow things down and the program trying to speed things up. And so I became very much interested in issues of pacing and timing and time scales and uh, traversals and trajectories over time uh, in dynamic computer multimedia like computer games. Uh, and <clears throat> that became one of the areas of my focus and one of the areas that I published uh, on. And then also, of course, I was looking at what happens to the presentational, orientational, organizational, multiplicative model of meaning when you move into this new space. Um, and obviously, for one thing, it just gets a lot bigger and more complex. Um, so there are many, many more different kinds of combinations that take place. The temporal dimension uh, affects those. But the thing that struck me as um, most evidently different was, uh, though it turned out it wasn't really different, it was just more obvious, uh, the role of feeling and emotion. So the pacing was closely related to anxiety that you had in playing the game. Because in most of these games you can die or at least fail in a way that feels unpleasant to you and you don't want that to happen and you have anxiety about whether it's going to happen and when the pace of the game goes more and more rapidly, your anxiety increases. And the choices that you make in the game are not based purely on the meanings that those choices have. They also are based on the feeling state that you are in at the time you make those choices. And there is developed a feedback loop between the meaning choices you make, the consequences of those meaning choices for the feeling state that you have, and the effects of the feeling state on the subsequent meaning choices that you make. So that the meaning-feeling cycle becomes a single integrated unit of analysis for understanding the trajectory of what you do and what happens in the course of playing the game. And this was the impetus for my most recent work, trying to articulate a more unified and integrated theory of meaning and feeling.